apple a day came about obviously over several months of whittling down food on how little I could eat each day. And if I managed to get through a day on say some fruit salad for breakfast, a yogurt for lunch and a prawn for dinner, because I managed to hide the rest or whatever I did with it, then the next day would be about, okay, well, let's take out the yogurt. And then it would be, okay, if I take out the prawn and just left with the fruit salad, and over time, you'd slowly whittle it down and it got to the point where I was an apple a day. Anorexia, it, it was all I had. It was the one thing I could challenge. It's like, you've done one apple, let's see if we can cut that down to a half. It's like, You've done a half iron, man. Let's see if we can do a full. I never thought I would be good at triathlon. Never ever thought I could get to Kona, which is the top of the sport. And never ever thought I could win a race. I thought that I was just loved it so much that I would just keep doing it. And then I remember getting my Kona spot and it was just like, I'm not sure just what, what happened here, like, how? Yeah, I mean, Nikki, from the first day we met, I, I thought it's, it's obviously someone who's pretty determined and she'd probably tell you otherwise, but I actually thought from, from, an, early, from an early stage in our um, association that she was going to be good. You know, it, it wasn't hard to put her on a path and direct her to, uh, um, to achieve a result. You know, once she knew that oh, I actually can go fast, and I can go fast for a long time, it was like, all right, let's pick this race, let's, let's target this event. People, m yeah, I have people messaging me now, how do you get so fast at running? It's like, I actually don't know. It, it, it's just, you follow the plan, you tick the box, and don't run before you can walk. The sport does reward patience, because, like I said, I never, I never went into a race going, this is the race I'm going to go to Kona, because you just can't. You know, I, I thought she was amazing even before I really knew her. But her hard work and dedication um, on the inside is, is, yeah, it blows me away what she can put herself through. And, and that directly transfers into the results that she gets in, you know, Ironman and every event she puts her heart and soul into. She'll do a, an extra gym session, she'll uh, do more stretching. You know, it's, it's a it's a hobby for me. I I, I love Ironman. I love the training. Um, but for her, it's an absolute you know passion. So um, we start a lot of training together. We don't always finish together. Yeah. The, what we're throwing at yeah. her with sport is doesn't even pale in comparison to what she's experienced in getting her life back to um, you know back to a healthy state. I was diagnosed with anorexia when I was 15 and then it was about in my early 30s where I started to physically and mentally become healthier. So the, f the 15 years that I was sick is, um, the, it's almost like you, you lose a bit of your memory, it's all quite blurry but it's it's a sad, I remember it as a very sad time. My parents were stressed. Um, they were super sad. You could just see it in their eyes. Um, obviously everyone was, I also felt a lot of anger towards me. Like, if you could eat, you would live. I remember <laughs> going to bed at night and wondering whether I personally would wake up in the morning or would I die in my sleep? And the worry that I had, despite the fact that I wanted to die, there was also a part of me that very much didn't want to die. The only way I can describe it is like having that negative monkey on your shoulder 24 seven telling you how horrible you are, how bad a person you are, how you don't live up to people's expectations. And imagine listening to that for 24 hours. The last thing you want to do is feed yourself to keep living to have a good day because that monkey is going to tell you how bad you are. 
the next day as soon as you wake up. Luckily, triathlon has not only been a, uh, I guess, a physical um, motivation for me, but it has taught me so much about myself when it comes to learning to reframe situations, to having belief in myself. There's just so much to the sport other than just the physical execution of swim, bike, run. What she's gone through to get through that phase of her life to where she is now is such a massive change that um, I don't think I need to go back and say, hey, you know, 10, 15 years ago, look, look, what you, look where you were. But I admire and I'm in, often in awe of where she was in some of those really difficult days and, and where she is now. You know, when I saw her on a podium in Kona um, and I thought, crikey, you know, that's, that's someone who's, who's really made a massive change in life and, you know, come through some real struggles. I don't even know if Nikki realises how big a deal that performance was, but I looked at that race and thought that's that's one of the best performances I think I've seen anyone do. I didn't have a lot of friends in school. When I was in treatment, it was all sick people so and then you come out of treatment and into the real world and need to develop new relationships. There is that sense of wanting to belong to something and wanting to feel um, valued by others and I guess that's what um, joining a coaching group um, through triathlon gave me. Okay. So back. We'll go across to the lights. Over the there. So, yeah, when I started at the gym after going through treatment and these group of people also went at the same time and I would watch them for ages and then slowly started kind of edging my way physically more towards them and then started asking questions. Hey, what are you doing? It looks really interesting. Oh, we're, you know, doing some exercises for our running. We do triathlon. And then I actually don't know how it progressed from there, but all I remember is next minute I was... Um, Okay, swimming with them and then I was running with them and then yeah like I said I really don't know how it progressed but next minute I'm finding myself doing a race with them. The early days of triathlon wasn't necessarily the hardest because it was new and it was exciting. It was almost like you wore tiredness with a badge like, I am so tired from my Ironman training that I did this weekend. And people, oh, what did you do? And you're like, oh, you'll never guess. I was training with a, a group of, of, of guys and they would wait for me at the top of the hill and then they'd get on their bikes and I'd never get a rest and would keep going. And then the funny thing is now that my greatest achievement is I'm now getting to the top of the hills having a cup of tea at the top while I wait for the boys to come up. The tables have turned and now it's about how powerful I can be rather than how much I weigh. The first time that I've won my age group in Ironman but there was that, that little flame of like, oh, because you are, because I did place quite well, it gives you a little motivation to go, shit, let's hit the next race and let's see if we can do the same. Let's, let's go for higher. But it's taken five years or five races of executing um, great places to get to that point of me going, okay, yep, you're talking about winning an age group. Maybe I should start talking about that too. Cheers. I still get caught up in when we get closer to a race. That's when the doubts just come flooding in. I start looking at my competitors. I start looking at, you know, oh, I, I feel fat now because I'm eating more and not training. And then I'll go on to Strava and I'll see someone else's run. I'm like, oh, she's amazing. They're like, I'm going to be awful. And then I'll go on to Instagram and 
where we see the highlight reel of everyone's life. And I'm like, oh, they're gonna be amazing. Everyone's gonna be laughing at me as I come across the line going, what happened to her? There are so many doubts and I was just looking for evidence to feed those doubts, which is exactly the same as with an eating disorder. You're looking for evidence to show you're a bad person. Um, so stop looking for it because it's not gonna lead you to a good place. The journey of recovery is learning other ways to deal with situations instead of hurting yourself. And that's why I guess I like the Ironman training so much because it can be six hours on the bike, but at six hours I'm not thinking about um, how awful I may have been that week. Or if it is, I often, by the end of that six hour bike ride, I've solved a lot of world problems and uh, my life is pretty sorted for the next week. I've sorted it all out within six hours. I don't often look back because it, it still feels a bit surreal that I was at that point and managed to get out of it and there's, that there's no defining moment that I can go, that was it. That is what turned me to, to wanting to fight for more. There, there's nothing I can put my finger on. It. It's, it's, it's time and perseverance, which I guess is very much like triathlon. You're never going to execute the perfect race. It's time and perseverance to want more. I get a sense of how far I've come from being as sick as I was only when I hit that red carpet in a race. And the reason for that is I was told um, when I was at my sickest that I would die, I would never walk again. And whenever I hit that red carpet, I think to myself, hmm, not only walking, running, winning. I was hungry enough to want better for myself when I was that sick, and now I'm hungry enough to want better for myself within triathlon. So, I'll just keep being hungry, <laughs> metaphorically. <laughs> Interesting choice. Yeah, that was an odd choice, but yeah. that's what it feels like. Yeah. The whole reason for, for doing this and speaking up about my journey is not necessarily about the anorexia or the journey. For me, it's about demonstrating to people, not just telling, but demonstrating to people that despite the odds, despite the negative voice you may hear either of yourself or that other people put on you, if you really want something and have that little spark inside you that it's worth fighting for and you can overcome odds, you can um, do something you didn't think was possible. And it's about doing what you need to do to be a better you. And for me, that is something I challenge every day. It's not just about the food I put on my plate. It's the way I interact with my partner. It's the way I um, talk to people at work when it's a challenging situation. It's the way I look at a training session now. It's um, but it's those things that I want to show people that just just keep fighting for something more, that you are worth something more than you probably think you are or other people tell you are. Just keep going, just find it.